Hello everyone and welcome to this video. We're going to see how the binary search algorithm works behind the scenes, so let's begin. The name binary comes from the fact that this algorithm splits the search space into two. It eliminates, therefore, half of the available options per iteration. That is why this algorithm is so efficient. But it does have one requirement. The sequence has to be sorted, and this is key right here. The sequence has to be sorted before even starting to run the algorithm in your code. The algorithm takes a simple the sorted sequence and the item that has to be found. It has to know what to search and where to search that for. And it returns as the output the index of the item if the item was found and minus one if the item was not found. Let's check out this example in detail. We have this sequence and we want to apply the binary search algorithm. What is the first step? Well, the first step is to sort the sequence in ascending order. We're going to take all of those elements and sort them in ascending order. This is the basic process. We provide the sequence and the target item as the inputs. Then we apply the algorithm and we get the index of the element as the output if the item was found. Minus one if the item was not found. Let's see this example step by step. Let's say that we have a target item of 8. We want to find this item in the sequence, and we initially don't know if that item exists. What is the first thing that we have to do? We have to get the length of the sequence. In this case, that length is 6, because we have 6 elements. Then here we have, right here visually, the indices of the sequence. The next step is to find the middle index the middle index of the sequence because we are going to use that and that is key, that is essential for this algorithm. We find the middle index by adding the starting index, the first index in the range in the interval, and the end index, the last index in the interval. And we divide that by two using integer division. Because this is going to be an index, we cannot have a float or a decimal number right here. In this case, the interval goes from zero to five. So we are going to add 0 plus 5 and divide that by 2 using integer division. The result is 2. So the middle index at this point in the algorithm is 2. And we have this right here. That index corresponds to this element, the middle element in the sequence. That element is going to be key for the algorithm. Why? Because we are going to ask, is this the target item? Is this the item that I'm looking for? In this case, it's not, because our target item was 8, remember? So, where should the search continue? To determine where the search should continue, we can use the fact that the sequence is sorted. And what does that tell us about the sequence? Well, that all the elements to the left of this item are going to be smaller than the item. And all the elements to the right of this item are going to be greater than this item. So we ask, is the target item, the item that we are looking for, smaller than this item? If the target item is smaller, then it could be somewhere in this part of the list. But that is not the case, because 8 is not less than 3, so it cannot be in this part of the list. We can therefore immediately discard this part of the list. The target element is not this middle element, and it's not located in this part of the list, so we just eliminate that from our set of possible options. Then we continue searching. But how should we continue our search? Well, we repeat the process in the other half of the list, where the elements that are greater than that element are found, because that is the only place in the sequence where the target item could be found. Still, it might not be there, but if it is, then it has to be somewhere in this half of the list. Remember that the list is sorted. Right here we have the indices again, and we are restricting our interval right now to indices between 3 and 5. Those are the elements that we are taking into account as the set of possible options. We repeat the process by using this interval, and then we select again the middle index in just that interval, that small interval that we have right now. We add the start index and the end index, and we divide that by 2 using floor division. The result is going to be the result of adding 3 plus 5, which is 8, divided by 2 using floor division. And that result is 4. That is the middle index. This index right here that corresponds to the element 8. And what happens? We ask again, 
Is this the target item? Is the middle element the target item that we are looking for? In this case, it is. This is the target item that we were looking for, the number eight. So we return this index, the index where that element is located in the sequence. And that is basically how the binary search algorithm works behind the scenes. It divides the search space into half, it analyzes or checks the middle element in the interval, and it discards half of the list on each iteration until it finds the element. If the element is not found, then minus one is returned. Great, if you want some additional practice, then try applying this algorithm to the sequence that we have right here to find the target item, seven. You can see that seven is not in the sequence, so the result is going to be minus one. But check out the different steps involved in the process and how the algorithm works. Share your thoughts in the comments and your results. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos linked right here. I'll see you there.